Time is 6 o'clock p.m. I call this meeting of the Miami Township Board of Trustees to order. Will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Posey? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mr. Culp? Here. Chief Stiglmeyer, you have the reading of casualties. Good evening, board. The following is the first responder casualty list for the period of September 7th through September 20th of 2022. Deputy Sheriff Jonathan Kolsky, Cobb County Sheriff's Office, Georgia. End of watch, September 8th, 2022. Deputy Sheriff Marshall Irving, Jr., Cobb County Sheriff's Office, Georgia. End of watch, September 8th, 2022. Police Officer Dylan Vakoff, the Arveda Police Department in Colorado, end of watch September 11th, 2022. And Police Officer Saria Burton, Richmond Police Department, Indiana, end of watch September 18th, 2022. Thank you, Chief. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. We have no guests and presentations. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. I move we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. Next item is new business. The first is resolution number 81-2022, a resolution to appoint a Miami Township Community Improvement Corporation board member. Board member, excuse me, Administrator Snyder. Good evening, board. Uh, with the departure of Mr. Hess, uh, we do have some movement on the Community Improvement Corporation board. I will be taking over the spot that is allocated for the Township Administrator. And with that, would like to nominate uh, Community Development Director Alex Carlson to serve on that board. And he has graciously accepted um, to serve on that board with your concurrence. So that is what uh, is covered by resolution 81-2022, so. Any questions for Mr. Snyder? Next two items on the agenda are motions for liquor permits under Chief Stiegelmeyer. The first is a DSI Hospitality Company, DBA Doubletree Guest Suites at 300 Prestige Place. And the second is Ohio Management LLC, DBA Lust Gentlemen's Club at 8911 Kings Ridge Drive. Again, good evening, board. Both of these uh, are transfer requests for permits uh, for already uh, uh, establishments that have permits. As you said, the first one was from Cloverleaf uh, Hospitality Management, Inc., and it's going to hosp uh, DSI Hospitality Company. This is a D5A and a D6 transfer. The D5A is a spiritus liquor on premises, consumption of beer, wine, mixed beverages on premises, or on an, or off premises in a sealed uh, container until 2.30 in the morning. And this is specifically for hotel with 50 or more rooms. And the D6 is sale of intoxicating liquor on Sunday between the hours of 10 or 11 a.m. until midnight. For this uh, particular uh, transfer request, we can find no reason to contest this. The second motion is for a transfer from the Dayton Golf Club doing business as Cheetah Premier Gentlemen's Club to Ohio Management LLC, which is gonna be doing business as Lust Gentlemen's Club. And this is for a transfer, again, of an already established liquor permit. The first three, D1, 2, and D3, are for beer, uh, all for on-premise consumption of being beer, wine, mixed beverages, uh, and spirituous liquor for consumption until 1 a.m. The D3A specifically is extended permit privileges until 2.30 a.m. And the D6, again, is for sale of intoxicating liquor on Sunday between the hours of 10 and 11 a.m. until midnight. Uh, again, we find no reason to test either one of these two motions for transfer, and I'll be glad to entertain any questions. Any questions? So, Chief, on, on motion um, for the Gentlemen's Club, a number of our residents find that type of business in our community undesirable. What do you say to them when you say, well, why don't you just not allow this liquor permit and then they'll just go away? Why can't we do something like that or why shouldn't we do something like that? We actually cannot just do that. We can make a, we have to, in order for us to make any type of objection, we have to have some type of uh, foundation to base that premise on. Uh, both this establishment, and particularly since I've been the chief, we have had absolutely no calls for service there of any substance. 
Uh, they have caused no problems, been no public nuisance or any other reason for us to object to having this liquor license there. We do not have the authority to pull a liquor license. We just can make a recommendation to the Liquor Control Commission. They're the ones that actually have to take the action. Uh, and they have a set guideline of uh, instances when we can make these motions to have this uh, reviewed by them. And at this point in time, this club has not met any of those obligations for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Mr. Schweikert, you have the next two resolutions. Resolution number 82-2022, a resolution to declare surplus property and authorize the sale of said property. And resolution number 83-2022, Resolution to authorize the Public Works Director to enter into a trade-in agreement. Good evening, Board. In your packet on Resolution 82, uh, it's a yearly housekeeping item where Public Works goes through our yearly inventory, and we found several items that were beyond its useful life, purpose, and no longer needed. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have on the inventory that we have. Any questions on the inventory? And then on resolution 83, I apologize that I have to come back for this resolution, but shortly after the last meeting, uh, the vendor that had the state agreement could not fulfill the purchase. So uh, we shopped around and we found that uh, AgPro could offer that same state pricing and they also gave us a little bit more money on the trade-in, so we'll be saving $594.12. So this resolution is just to enter into an agreement with them uh, to replace the mowers that we find value instead of surplusing. Yeah, I appreciate your diligence in uh, finding an opportunity that improves on the previous resolution you brought to us. Thank you for that. Any other questions or comments? No, I would just echo that comment. I mean, frequently in public service or public administration, we see, oh, well, they raised the price, so we just bring back a, an order to raise our price. And I like that, uh, that our department is going out and finding other vendors. So thank you. The last item of new business is resolution number 84-2022, a resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. Mr. McCord. Good evening, board. This is an annual uh, housekeeping measure that we uh, are, are asked to do by the county auditor to accept the rates, the, the millage rates, uh, as voted on uh, by the residents. And uh, I've attached the uh, this memo from the county auditor along with the revenue projections that each of the levies will bring in uh, for uh, this, this tax year and calendar year 2023. So happy to answer any questions if I can. Any questions for Mr. McCord? Yeah, has the uh, county auditor made any progress on sorting out the tax issue with the Austin Landing building? I know we have contacted them. I have not heard back from them specifically on the one uh, office, office tower that they were going to revisit for evaluation. So we will, uh, I will follow up with them and get something out uh, this next week. Thank you. That concludes new business. The next item on the agenda is public comments. This is the portion of the meeting where you, the residents of Miami Township, are invited to share your thoughts with the board. Please know that this time has been set aside from the board to listen to you. Your comments are valued and will be taken into careful consideration. The board will not engage in dialogue at this time and presentations are limited to five minutes each. We invite the speaker to the podium. Good evening, board. My name is Matthew Turton, uh, 6600 Jamaica Road. Uh, I just wanted to bring the attention of the board that since the last time I spoke two weeks ago, uh, we've had two more events that have intruded on our peace of mind, our quality of life, and our uh, uh, existence on the other side of the river, uh, contiguous to us to the south at the Stony Hill Bed and Breakfast or Stony Hill Banquet Club or whatever uh, the name of the establishment is. Um, one good thing is we haven't had fireworks that have gone off in the last two weeks that have interrupted our horses' uh, uh, quality of, of care that we try to give to them. Uh, I would like to know, or would like to let the board know that we have not pursued individuals to fill our stalls um, since in the last two years. We have empty stalls at our barn and facility uh, because we cannot. I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable with putting new uh, borders on our facility. Um, uh, we have two or three 
empty stalls at this point. I would like you to know that my business as a uh, agricultural individual who, who files a Schedule F farming requirement for the IRS uh, is out of money because, not out of money, but less in pay due to the fact that I cannot ethically bring in a new border with this situation to the south of us. Um, the noxious weeds are continued to be there. I reported those to the board, or not to the board specifically, but to the township maybe six weeks ago. Um, the complaint of them in bloom uh, are still there. It comes into our, our fields. Um, I have to address that with herbicides, etc. cetera. Um, I would like that addressed if possible. Uh, or, or attention brought to it. Um, we continue to be over there. I'm continuing to be the one person with my wife and our animals that is basically harassed every Saturday night with the disco lights, uh, with the music, um, whatever the volume, whatever the uh, lumens are is you know, not uh, important. It's noise and it's light pollution from a nuisance property to the south. Um, I appreciate the due diligence that the board has given. I appreciate the time and work that the police department has put in by going and showing up at every time that I call uh, and complain about the situation. Uh, they have been diligently going over every Saturday or every evening that uh, is invading our privacy. Um, if you have any questions for me, I'm willing to answer anything. Not at this time, but thank you again for continuing your reporting. The, the court actions as a report are still in progress, and uh, eventually, someday, hopefully, we'll get a more strong conclusion than we did from the, the judge on this. I know the injunction is in force that is placed by Judge Skelton, but what I would like to see, and I think what individuals who are taxpaying members of our community would like to see the actual enforcement of the injunction, if that's possible, or a networking of our township with whomever has the jurisdiction to enforce the injunction to its fullest. I know the township has spent some dollars on uh, the litigation of this, and it would be nice to see some type of actual meat on the bones with uh, the injunction being truly enforced. Yeah, um, I will answer that question. Your, your time has expired, but the, the short version of it is that the court's authority, the court is the one that retains the authority to enforce the injunction once it's ordered. We don't have any spontaneous authority. And so that's only through the contempt process that the, the injunction is enforceable by us. The county has a separate con uh, injunctive action that has different rights and remedies that uh, Mr. Paulette's time to respond to that action hasn't yet expired, but again, there are multiple paths that are being pursued to enforce this. It's not a function uh, of um, anything other than we're responsive to what the court allows us to do in response to the injunction we received. Outstanding. Thank you. Uh -huh. I appreciate your time. I'll see you in two weeks. Close the com public comment period and we'll move on to consideration of resolutions and motions. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 81-2022, a resolution to appoint a Miami Township Community Improvement Corporation board member. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Morris. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve the liquor permit for DSI Hospitality Company doing business as Doubletree Guest Suites at 300 Prestige Place. I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Morris. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. I'll make a motion that we approve the liquor permit, motion for liquor permit for Ohio Management LLC DBA Lust Gentlemen's Club at 8911 Kings Ridge Drive. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Morris. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 82-2022, a resolution to declare surplus property and authorize the sale of said property. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey. Aye. Mr. Morris. Aye. Mr. Culp. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 83-2022, a resolution to authorize the public works director to enter into a trade-in agreement. 
Is there I'll, a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. I'll make a motion we adopt resolution number 84-2022, a resolution accepting the <coughs> amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. We have no public hearing. Department head comments. Chief Stigelmeyer. I have none, thank you. Mr. Schweikert. I just have one, and that is uh, fall is in the air, and it's a great time for our residents to get out and enjoy our parks that we have. We have 11 throughout the community here, over 711 acres. Uh, that is including Cox Arboretum and Austin Landing, but great opportunity to get out and enjoy our amenities. Thank you for that reminder. Mr. Carlson. Uh, I have no comments, but I'm excited to continue the conversation about parks in our work session. Thank you. Mr. McCord. I have none. And last but not least, Mr. Snyder. Uh, good evening again, board. I did just want to let you know that uh, myself and the public works director met with the Montgomery County Engineer's Office to follow up on some of the comments that were made regarding uh, traffic issues, particularly on Cobblegate, uh, along with a number of other um, roadway items of discussion uh, that the County Engineer's Office wanted to discuss with us and, and that we had for them. But we are gathering some additional data um, on kind of the situation up there and we'll bring that forward at a, another meeting. So um, beyond that, uh, did just want to also congratulate uh, former trustee Berman Lair for having turned 99 last Friday. So. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Schneider. Elected officials comments, Mr. Newell. I have none. Mr. Call. I have none. Mr. Morris. Just a quick question. Do, can anybody share the process with which the fine that was levied against her, Mr. Powlett, is being collected? Is that being, uh, do we send him a bill? Does he bring the check over? Is that being appealed? What's the process he, there? He still has 10 days, I believe, and Terry, correct me, on no, his appeal, you, let, potentially. Let me, let me go ahead and interrupt so. you. Until the attorney's fees are awarded, it's not an appealable or an enforceable order, and that hearing is set for sometime the first week of November. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I had that concern as well, and again, as I reiterated, uh, we have an injunction against Mr. Powlett, but it's up to the court to enforce it, and at the moment, they've chosen to enforce it through a monetary penalty. Uh, I will encourage our law director to review the comments being made at these hearings and see if another contempt hearing is warranted during this time period. At this time, I believe I will make a motion to go into a work session at 617 to discuss the park's master plan. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. We will be conducting the work session from this chambers. Mr. Carlson? Good evening, board. Uh, Mr. Schweiger, thank you for the wonderful transition uh, to discussion of a parks master plan. Uh, this is an item we have discussed in a previous work session uh, board. Um, as we discussed our last session, uh, the intention was to take this draft scope of work and a rough timeline uh, to our parks advisory board for comment. Um, I won't speak for Mr. Swikert, but I feel that we had a very successful meeting. Uh, the Parks Advisory Board is excited to uh, get to work on a plan um, as an advisory group, provide feedback on surveys, assist in public meetings, um, and uh, generally provide feedback uh, throughout the planning process. Um, so this draft scope of work um, was presented. There were modifications made uh, on the basis of our discussion. Uh, we revised our draft timeline, uh, the two documents I've presented to you. Uh, so first, the draft scope of work uh, by no means is directly intended to be a table of contents, but in a big picture, uh, these are the questions we are intending to uh, try to get to the bottom of and put in some kind of formal document that would in the future be reviewed by the board uh, for formal adoption. Uh, so if there are any questions, concerns, or any other additional items that uh, feel pertinent or, or needing to be added to this list, that's fantastic. Um, I'm not asking that we formally approve the document, so it certainly will change over time. Uh, and then the uh, draft schedule has been presented to you. My intention would be to update this schedule throughout the process, uh, present to you uh, with our monthly report um, from our department as these items update, provide progress updates um, on where we are uh, and what uh, stage of the plan we are in. Um, in our staff research, uh, we've taken a look at a couple of other plans around the region. Uh, we showed some of these screenshots in a previous presentation. 
Uh, the most recent comparable plan, uh, similar to the scale and scope that uh, we would like to uh, prepare for a parks master plan was done in uh, the city of Middletown. Um, in doing some research, city of Middletown mm -hmm. consulted a, a group called V3. They paid somewhere around $150,000 for their plan. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give some context for uh, so what, what that cost is, uh, engaging a consultant versus doing some in-house work. Um, between my discussion uh, with uh, Director Swikert, um, we certainly feel that we have the capacity to prepare a plan uh, that will set us up for a successful uh, direction for our community parks. Um, and wanted to present this schedule scope to you and see if there were any questions or concerns before we begin uh, this planning process. I'll just say that I think that there is a, um, this is a lot of uh, well-organized work to be done and I appreciate you bringing it forward in this format. Uh, I would ask that you uh, plan a reporting schedule to us as well on your work for this and so that it becomes either monthly or bi-monthly that this, we're going to have this work session again and you're going to report the progress and where the community may be of assistance or the trustees or any uh, else may be involved so that we can keep updating as this goes along. Um, I like setting goals deadlines and then I also like reporting against them so that we make sure that we're all holding each other accountable. Am I reading this correct that basically we're looking at spending most of 2023 on the planning process? Correct, yeah. I think uh, the, the first portion of 2023 uh, would be engaging the public, um, getting their feedback uh, through a series of open house surveys, and then sort of the last half of the year shaping that into uh, some actionable strategies and then drafting that into a formal document to, again, bring back to the public. Yeah, and I certainly support doing it right rather than doing it fast, but one thing I would make sure that you connect with Mr. McCord in the finance department and look at the timeline with regards to the American Rescue Plan money and when that money has to be dedicated, allocated, and or spent so that the park system doesn't potentially miss out um, because that money is going to have to be spent. Uh, and there are some deadlines on it before it expires. We've already uh, expired one opportunity for funds that we didn't take advantage of. I would hate for our parks department to miss out on using those same funds. Anything else? All right, on the motion, we close the work session at 622. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. This time, I'll make a motion that we move into executive session for two separate purposes. The first is to adjourn into executive session for conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are the subject of pending or imminent court action in accordance with ORC section 121.22G3. And the second purpose would be an executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official for the investigation of charges of compliance against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual unless the public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual requests a public hearing in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22G1. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. Morris? Aye. Mr. Culp? Aye. We'll be adjourning the public work of this meeting from the executive session. No further decisions will be made in the public meeting, and we will be conducting our executive session in the conference room. I therefore conclude this meeting at 623 p.m.